Okay, have you ever found yourself having to follow some user activity? Have you had to correlate, look in one place, look in the secure logs somewhere, look at the um, cloud trail logs? Did you find that a challenge? Did you wish you had more time to just do better things and, and have everything in the same place? My name is Anya Develta. Today I'm going to um, tell you how to centralize user, centralize user activity from external sources with using AWS CloudTrail Lake. So first, let's just think about the problem that we're trying to solve. So you might have a, an access key that you've discovered has been used by somebody who's no longer in the business. Or some resource configuration has changed and it's no longer compliant. And you're wondering, yeah, what happened there? Or even like a database server has disappeared from UAT and you're wondering, what has happened? How did this happen? When did it happen? Was it intentional? Was it automated? Why am I no longer compliant? Where did it happen and why did it happen? So that's the problem. Well, what's the challenge? Well, the challenge is, if you even look in your CloudTrail in one account, there's lots and lots of activity coming in from everywhere, from the console, from the CLI. But you don't just have one account, right? You have multiple accounts. Uh, so that activity is in lots of accounts. So imagine having to, to look in multiple accounts to have a look at that. But of course, you'll have some data in CloudTrail, but there'll, there'll also be some data, say, in config that will give you some more context about what's changed on the resource. But then you might be using uh, Okta to log on, so there'll be some activity somewhere else in, in, in a different place. Or again, it could be on a, on a hybrid instance somewhere. And it's really, really, really hard for for humans to correlate all that info, especially when you're in a hurry and you want to get the answers really quickly. And of course, that's all why maintaining immutability, right? Because if somebody can delete that data, then you might never find it. So that's the problem and the challenge. In terms of what this activity may look like, there's some examples. So CloudTrail, um, shows you the actions taken by users, roles, AWS services in the console, using the CLI, etc. So here's an example of a CloudTrail event, uh, and here it shows you who. So it was uh, a user called Mary um, from this source IP address trying to do something. And then when did they try to do it? So that's the event time. What were they trying to do? They were creating a user called Paolo. How did they do it? They did it on the Mac. And what was the outcome? A user called Paolo was created. So that's just an example of some of the activity in CloudTrail. What does activity look like in AWS config? So this is an example of somebody setting encryption settings on an S3 bucket. And then the somewhere else activity. So this is a, just a screenshot of the var log secure file from a Linux server, and somebody created a, a user called Anya Demo. I wonder who that was. Okay, so if, if the problem is trying to centralize all the data, and the challenge is that the data could be everywhere, what's the solution? I'm a solutions architect, so the answer is always, it depends, right? It depends on your use case. But if these were the problems you're trying to address, most likely AWS CloudTrail Lake. If you need to um, have uh, control over the underlying storage, um, then maybe that's an anti-pattern, but otherwise CloudTrail Lake will help you with that challenge. So just in case you haven't heard of CloudTrail Lake, um, it's a managed audit data lake, and it allows you to capture the data, aggregate it, visualize it, and analyze it. It's a turnkey solution, so with a few clicks of a button, you can start collecting the audit events. You don't have to do any ETL. The data is ready for you to query. And it's, of course, immutable. So once the event is ingested, you can't change it. And the QR code on the screen just um, 
tells you more about a recent announcement with the way that you can store the data just uh, in terms of your use cases. So check it out if that's um, something that you're interested in. So with Cloud Tree Lake, you can ingest data from AWS sources. So you can ingest data from CloudTrail, and you can do that for your whole organization. For AWS Config, again, for your whole organization, you might see some data from Audit Manager there. You can also store data from third-party ISV sources, and I'll, I'll show you some of the, uh, the examples of the ones that you can ingest the data with. And then you can also just ingest other data from on-premises or, or other hybrid applications. And then from there, you can obviously audit, visualize, and, uh, and query that data. So there are two types of integrations um, that you can, um, they can have in CloudTree Lake. What, the first type is those direct integrations, the partner integrations. So this is the list of some of the partner integrations that you can have. The partners will, um, you will configure the, the channel, the CloudTree Lake channel you want to send the data to. They will put the data in the right format and send it into CloudTree Lake for you. Uh, but for the sake of today in this quick lightning talk, I'm going to show you those custom integrations from these, let's just say from, the, from a Linux server, but there could be database activity or just some other integrations. So this is where you have to run an application put the data into the format that CloudTree Lake expects, and then use the Put Audit Events API to send the data over to CloudTree Lake. So again, this is just a foundational example of how to send external data into CloudTree Lake. Uh, I've got some QR codes at the end that show you how to do that more on scale. But just for the sake of today's demo, it's really simple. I've got a remote VM that's running somewhere it has a secure log file, and I'm just going to run a, a script that will use the Put Audit Events API to push this data into CloudTree Lake. Once the data is in CloudTree Lake, we're going to qu query the data. Again, this is just foundational just to show you how this works. Um, so let me switch over to the demo. Okay, so I am now in the CloudTree Lake console, and I'm going to head over to Event Data Stores here. And of course, my account decided to log out uh, quite handy. Just bear with me. Let me just log back in. And let me refresh this. Okie dokie. So I'm in the CloudTree Lake console. I've got my Event Data Stores. If I wanted to create one, I would click on this button. I would give it a name. And I would select how long I want to store it for. And then from there, I would select what type of events I want to push into uh, my event data store in CloudTrail Lake. So as you can see, I can push AWS events here from CloudTrail different type of events, including my organization. I can also push some CloudTrail Insights events or some AWS Config events. But I want events from integration. And again, the choices that I have here is these are those partner integrations I could select. But instead, I'm going to go to my custom integration. And then from there, it's literally next and finish. So that's how simple it is to create an event data store. But as I already have one that I created earlier, I'm just going to expand that for you. And the relevant data that I need here is this channel ARN. I'm going to need that for later. So this is what I'm concerned about, the channel ARN here, because I'm going to need that so that we can um, we can push the data um, to CloudTrail Lake. So let's connect to this uh, to this remote VM. Ultimately, uh, it's just an EC2 instance that's running in another account, but it could be a hybrid instance somewhere. Um, I'm just going to connect to it remotely. It, it doesn't run in this account. So I'm just going to SSH to it. And I'm going to 
the other so you can see this better okay and let's just add a user user it's like a test and spelling isn't it live demo <laughs> reinvent okay so let's just have a look at this entry in the uh, in the log file actually let's not less that because that's going to be a lot let's just tail it tail there you go i'm just going to tail the last 15 lines and somewhere in there you should see this user add event for reinvent and and just the, the copy of the event so i'm just gonna so what i would normally do is i would have um the the, the log file the secure log file rotating and have a, a cron tab a, a job running on on a schedule to send the data off to cloud tray lake but since we're in a demo i'm just gonna pause that look Low, um, log rotation quickly and I'm just going to quickly run a script and then I'll explain to you in um, on a different screen of what this script does so the script will just run and uh, it just loops through some lines so what is this script actually doing So it's just a simple Python script. Again, um, this is just to show you the, the principles of what we're doing here. But just some of the key things. We initialize the profile so that we can actually send the data into CloudTray Lake. I've hard-coded the region in there. I'm specifying a file path, so where I want the script to pick up my log files from. And there's that channel ARN here. So this is where I'm specifying which CloudTrail Lake channel to send my log data to. Some more things here. I've, I've hard-coded the instance ID as remote VM1. And then from there, I start actually reading the event, events in from the line. So there's that looping through 100 lines. So I'm grabbing the data from my secure log file. I'm building it out, and this is where I actually put the data into the correct format that CloudTrail Lake is expecting. Once I've built out that data, I can then send it over to CloudTrail Lake. So this is this is me doing so. The response equals CloudTrail put audit events. So it's putting that data over to CloudTrail Lake, and Hopefully, when we look over at uh, CloudTrail Lake, we'll be able to see that data. Uh, and just note, just in case you're wondering, um, I'm using Code Whisperer. I actually come from a operational background, so I'm not a fan of writing code. So uh, I could use Code Whisperer to actually help me write some of this. So let's just say I wanted to send files to S3. Um, in theory, uh, if my laptop continues to behave today, that should actually, there you go. It's going to give me information how to do it, which is quite cool. Um, because then I don't have to do that myself. So that's just, uh, just a quick additional information on, on how to do that. Okie dokie. So let's go back to the console uh, the data sent in. So let's just have a look in CloudTrail Lake at my data. So if I just head over here, uh, I've got some um, some queries that I've pre-written, uh, so you don't have to watch me type them. But there's my event data stores that I have, and I'm using the the demo event data store. So if I was to just run this first query here, which is just a, a select from. Yes, I will get some data, but it'll just be a lot of data. But it, it might not be quite what I'm looking for just yet. So there is the, the query result. So it's pulling some data in for me. It's 25 items. But I want to look for something maybe more informative or specific. So 
let's search for anything that's coming in from today so it is the 28th today right so let's change that to the 28th and let's have a look what's coming through from today so again that query should should run it is the 28th today right i hope so uh bear with me there we go okay so there's that data coming through all the data that came in from today so obviously again if you were collecting this data from multiple instances straight away you would have that data ready in there but let's look for some data with uh with the actual account account reinvent i think i called it reinvent there we go So again, this query should now return. Oh, I don't remember what I called that user, but let's just have a look. It should return. Okay. Obviously bad spelling. But you get the idea. I'm able to actually search for part of the trace in here. okay you get the idea it should return what i'm looking for but what else is really handy once i've got this data centralized for example if you come across uh, a specific ip entry so you know you're you're looking at some of the activity in your secure logs and you're noticing an ip address coming through and you're thinking you know there's something not quite right going on here what are they doing there's some you know they look they're trying to um kind of try all these different accounts they're trying to connect what's happening on this remote vm well what else you can do rather than have to go to a different console or a different product you can switch over to your other event data store which in this case is this one here for cloud trail and you can search for that for that ip address just from the same console, from the same place. What else did they do in the console? What other activities did they perform? Again, everything is all in one place here. Um, so you're able to, to kind of get to the data much quicker. And you can see that again, they were already doing some, they, they were doing some queries uh, and doing some other bits and pieces, but you've got that information all in one place. So that's just a really quick whistle-stop tour of how to send the data from an external source. Um, in this case, this was a Linux server, but to have it all in one place, to be able to query all together using Cloud Tray Lake. Again, you wouldn't be doing this, you know, you wouldn't be running one single script on an, on an EC2 instance. You'd probably do this more centrally. So there's a couple of QR codes here. The first QR code is a blog post from my colleagues. And basically, they, they do this, but more at scale. So um, they created a systems manager automation documents. Then they will collect the data from the EC2 instances in a central place and then push them down to Cloud Trail Lake. So that's one of the ways that you could do this. You could also use a Lambda function to, to pull the data in, or you could uh, put your scripts and your um, your schedule into the the user data of the EC2 instance to push the data across that way. Um, so that's one of the ways to get that external data into um, Cloud Trail Lake. The second QR code is just in case you haven't worked with Cloud Trail Lake before. We have a repository of sample queries that you can just get started with, so you don't have to write them yourself. So that's another uh, QR code to check out.
if you haven't come to speak to us in our cloud operations kiosk, please come and see us. Um, if you want to talk about Cloud Tree Lake or anything else Cloud Ops related, come and say hello. There's also swag. And, uh, and please don't forget to fill out the session survey. And thank you so much for coming to see me today.